Welcome to the Phoenix Seventh-day Baptist Church. So glad you're all here. And Victoria, we're sorry about Penelope. We'll miss her. And uh, I forgot to ask people about singing our choir director and uh, scripture, anybody? Okay, we got scripture. Great. So let's start with our, well, no, let's start with a prayer. Nobody's over there. You want to move everybody over there? I don't know. They couldn't make it today. But they're all well. Now, well, okay. So uh, let me uh, start with prayer. Heavenly Father, good morning. And thank you for your day. And thank you for your Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us and lead us. Help us that our ears are open and our eyes are open, that we can receive your word. Not mine, but yours. And I thank you in the name of your son, Yeshua. Amen. All right, we'll start our first song. Our scripture reading this morning is Matthew eleven twenty-eight. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Does anybody have a prayer request this morning? Okay. Let's pray. Lord, we're here today on your Sabbath day, welcoming you into our presence. Thank you for this day. We love Sabbath day. In Jesus' name. As you know, I'm not a minister. So I asked God to give me an idea what I should have a sermon on. And Sure enough, he gives me one a couple weeks before I even my turn to do it. So I uh, I decided to do rest. This is yours. I'll leave it over here. Okay, we're going to talk about rest. Who made rest? God. God made rest. What is rest to us? When you're tired and you're almost broke down, what do you need? Rest. When you uh, feel like you can't make another step, that's it. Even if you're a runner, you know, you run out of energy, you want to rest. When the things of life are just too much. When everything goes wrong and you can't even think straight, you want to rest. Have you ever thought what it would be like if God had forgotten to make the things we call rest? He knew in the very beginning that we as humans would work hard and when the sun went down, we'd want to rest. How long has it been since you got out in nature? Have you walked out in a desert when it's cool? Not hot like today, but 
when it's cool, how quiet it is. I remember uh, many years ago, I decided that uh, I was going to work with some young people up to 10 years old, and they were called Pathfinders. And I said, well, I'll, I'll go out to the desert and see what it's like. We can take them out there. I went out there, and it was in Death Valley. It was so quiet. I never heard it ring before, but it was ringing with quietness. There was no wind. It was just pure silence. Have you ever walked in a park or sat down on a bench? Have you been by a river and put your hand in it as the water's going by? Or just walking in the evening? How about we turn the TV off, turn the radio off, open the front door, and just listen to the wind or the birds? I'll always remember that ringing. It's, uh, I don't know if you've ever experienced it, but uh, it's something beyond. You know, we're used to cars, traffic, blowing of horns, TVs on, dogs barking. But when you get out into real quietness, the nature of God, you know, you could go out, out into, we, we live here in the desert, you could go out and sit on a rock and just sit there and listen. It'll surprise you. You could even see maybe a deer trail or little rabbits running. I remember, I think one of the first times I really enjoyed nature was I went to the beach. I'm sure we've all been to the beach. And you hear those waves coming in. And you can't hear anything else but that crashing of the waves. It's so relaxing and quiet. And it's God's nature. Jesus is in all of nature. All of it. I love that. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Our generation, we work hard. And at the end of the week, we're thankful for the weekend. We're thankful for that time of rest. John said, Jesus is the creator. He was in the world. And the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Kind of a shame that we, today, hardly anybody knows Jesus. We're just turning away. Churches are closing. What did Jesus do when he had finished his creation work? And everything that he did create. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. And all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work. Which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had risen from all his work. He had rested, excuse me, rested from all his work which he had made. Genesis 2, 1 to 3. How did God feel about what he had made? 
And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Can you imagine Adam and Eve as they're tasting all the great fruit, seeing the animals? It must have been something. You know, when God had made Adam and Eve, and that would be the son and the father, they refused to make man a robot, a mere machine, programmed to worship its creator. Instead, they took the terrible risk the risk of making man free. And they knew the awful possibility that lay ahead. How could God rest in a situation like that? How could he rest when he knew that man might rebel? How could he rest when he knew that sin might enter and mar and ruin the beautiful world he had just made. And yet he did rest. That is a miracle in itself. He knew because of Calvary, already laid ahead of time in the divine heart, the Father and the Son had agreed together that if man should sin and thereby bring upon himself the sentence of death, the son himself would come and die in man's place. And so God rested, even while the universe itself, and especially this planet, was threatened. Can that sort of rest be ours? It can. We too can rest in spite of the circumstances. We can rest in perfect confidence that God will take care of every problem, every emergency, seen or unseen. How does Peter? Encourage us to trust in God. Cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. 1 Peter 5, 7. What about Paul? What does Paul say? And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Romans 8, 28. How can we be sure that God will give us everything we need? He promises that. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us, all of us, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Romans 8.32 Do you begin to see that the final day of creation, the week, was all about? How did God stop to rest? He wasn't tired. Why didn't he punch out at 6 o'clock Friday and get back to heaven for the weekend? Or off to some galaxy for a new project? Why didn't he just say, that's it, and write us off as a job done, a job to be forgotten? Why didn't he leave Adam and Eve to wonder where they had and where they were, and how they'd got there. Instead, he gave them a beautiful 24 hours of happy 
fellowship, telling them how he had made them, explained how he had made the world, the sun and the moon and all the beautiful stars at night. It's something to think about too. You could go out in the evening and just look at the stars, how beautiful they are, how quiet. Telling them that he had made the trees, the fruit, and the flowers for their enjoyment, and assuring them that this happy time of fellowship with him could be repeated week by week from then on. Why did God give Adam and Eve all that beauty with trees and flowers? The Sabbath is a day of remembering. What does God ask us to remember? Exodus 28 to 11. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and rested the seventh day. Why should we remember the Sabbath? Because he made the world and rested the seventh day. What did God do to the seventh day? And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Sanctified. What does it mean to be sanctified? It means to be holy. When he created the Sabbath, he created us to be holy. He made us holy. He made it perfectly, beautifully, flawless. And how did he do that? He did that by putting his own presence into it. Ezekiel tells us, moreover, also I gave them, being us, my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them, that they might know that I am the Lord that sanctified them. How did God do this? Does he do it all the time? Second Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, creator, preacher, excuse me. What did Jesus say? Without me, ye can do nothing. Think about the career, the character of Adam, what it must have been before sin. He must have been a great guy. Before guilt marred his encounters, before he began to die cell by cell, Adam was created in the image of God. Let's think about our characters, what they might have been and still can be because of God's creative power. There are things to think about as we sit on a rock out in the desert or out into the ocean area, especially at the end of the week, and wonder at the sights and sounds of nature, as we remember who made all of nature and who made us. It is true that life today for millions 
include little of the beauty we have been talking about. It is not that God intended it to be. He planned his plans have been pushed aside. His creation scarred by our uncaring hands. The world today, with its high rise prisons, its concrete speedways, its sums and the bumps in the road, the pollution, the fires, the floods, the earthquakes, the dust storms. When we see a boo coming in, we know we're going to get a whole bunch of dust. And the characters of men, too, have been marred. There is little left in the image of God. But can God change all this? And will he? Revelation 21.5 Behold, I make all things new. That's us too. We're going to be made new. I keep thinking about how tall we'll be. We won't be five foot, six foot, seven. We're going to be way up there. All things new, even people. Yes, even people. For people are the problem. It would do little good for God to fix up the planet without fixing up the people. And again, do you begin to see what the special day at the end of the week is to all, what it is all about? It is a happy reminder that we are not the children of choice or chance, but children of the beautiful king. I think I'm all done. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for what you created for us. I imagine it was just so beautiful. But after the flood, we see a lot of dry, desert, people fighting, arguing. We can't wait for you to come and take us home. It'll be so nice. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your Sabbath that we can think back through the week and help us to remember every day, every moment that all things, all things that we do and say are for your honor and your glory. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, and don't forget, we got potlucks, some good food.